In this lesson, we're going to do some electrophilic aromatic substitution practice problems. I'll teach you to evaluate directing effects of groups present on the ring and evaluate the groups that you're introducing. Are they activating or deactivating to get the most viable synthesis possible? I'm also going to introduce you to a couple new reactions here that'll help you cope when you see these types of problems. Let's begin with this example. I'm going to redraw the molecule so that we can look at directing effects. Now I've colored each of these groups, and now we want to evaluate where that group would put something else on the ring. So we can see if we can decide which group to install first. Let's begin by evaluating chlorine. Inductively, this is an electron withdrawing group. However, chlorine has three lone pairs of electrons that by resonance, it can donate into the ring. This effect wins. Resonance often wins over inductive effects. And so we're going to get an ortho para director here. I'm going to put some asterisks on the ring to show this. So chlorine will direct to these three starred positions. Now let's evaluate the sulfonic acid. This is a very electron withdrawing group and it is going to direct meta to itself. Okay, so if we look at where we've starred this structure, we can see that chlorine will put the sulfonic acid group across from it. It might have some mixture of ortho isomers, but this will direct this here. So this evaluation is telling us that it'll make sense to put on the chlorine first, then introduce our sulfonic acid. This is also a good idea for another reason. The chlorine is a moderately deactivating group. So it pulls electron density out of the aromatic ring and makes it less likely to react as a nucleophile, which we need for electrophilic aromatic substitution. But the sulfonic acid is strongly deactivating. So once it's on there, it's quite hard for the ring to react. So it's really good. We have a very great situation set up where we can introduce our moderately deactivating group first, then add in our sulfonic acid and make the molecule we want. I'm going to show this retrosynthetically just to give you a little practice with thinking backwards as well. We said due to the directing effect of chlorine, we want to introduce the sulfonic acid last. So we're going to disconnect that first. We'll show a wavy line to represent that. When we break this bond, we'll get back to chlorobenzene. And in each of these problems, I'm going to want you to take it back to benzene just for the practice. I'm sure there's better commercially available molecules we could buy, but we'll go back to benzene. So, so we'll show one more arrow that cleaves the chlorine off of the ring. Great. We have a synthetic plan. Let's show our forward synthesis. To affect chlorination, we can treat benzene with chlorine in the presence of iron trichloride. Now our ortho para director is installed on the ring and we can do sulfonation. Now this deactivates the ring, so I think that we should use fuming sulfuric acid, which is sulfur trioxide in H2SO4. That'll give it a little kick. Um, SO3 is a better electrophile, and so we can get this reaction to go even though the ring is a bit deactivated. Now, since chlorine is an ortho para director, we might get a mixture of ortho and para products. The para product often dominates. It's kind of hard to put a group ortho because of steric hindrance. So we'll get mostly this product. So this is a good reaction, but we might want to acknowledge if our professor asked us to draw all products, um, we might want to acknowledge that we will form some of this. And I'm just going to box the product that we want. Now, one thing I haven't mentioned to you yet is that the sulfonation reaction is actually reversible. So if we take these products and warm them up in sulfuric acid, we can get this group to leave. And so in this case, it was great. We put it in the position that we wanted to predominantly because this para product forms more readily. However, in some cases, we might be able to install this group to control reactivity and then remove it later. Let's try an example to see if we can apply this new information. Let's redraw our molecule with some color so we can do our evaluation of the groups. Again, we have a halogen. I've just colored it green again. This is going to direct ortho para to itself. Hey, and that looks pretty good. That's where we need an OH group. And our hydroxyl group is also going to direct ortho para to itself. 
Okay, that directs where we need the bromine. So we have a really good situation set up here, but we need to figure out what to introduce first. Let's think about how activating and deactivating these groups are then. This OH group is strongly activating. And the bromine, like the chlorine, is moderately deactivating. So we have our first activating group in this problem. The activating group has electrons that have great resonance with the ring. So we get a lot of electron density in the ring. And so these positions are quite activated for attack. In fact, with phenols, the para position undergoes EAS quite readily. So we almost have like a double star here where it's really directing to this position. Well, that's kind of tough because we do want to introduce this first, but it's going to want to direct here. Since this is our strong activator, we definitely want to introduce it first because it makes the ring able to attack things better. However, we will get a regioselectivity problem because the bromine will want to go here. See if you can think of a way to use our blocking group and remove it, starting with maybe phenol. Go ahead and pause me and try that. Okay, we'll jump right into the forward synthesis, and I'm going to show you how to make phenol from benzene. If we're starting with benzene, we could nitrate, reduce, and go through a diazo compound to add in water and, and get our phenol, but there's a more straightforward way. So first we can brominate. This gives bromobenzene, and then if we treat this with sodium hydroxide and heat it up really, really hot, we can get phenol that way. So double delta, lots and lots of heat. This is actually a benzyne reaction. And so let me show you the mechanism of that really quickly. So we have bromine with the adjacent H atom. The inductive electron withdrawing effect of bromine helps with the acidity of these adjacent protons. And NaOH can actually deprotonate this under these very forcing conditions. Let's show the arrow pushing. Hydroxide will deprotonate here. These electrons will push in and will kick off bromine. This gives us a benzyne, which absolutely exists, though it looks like it shouldn't. We have this triple bond in an aromatic ring. And triple bonds really want to be linear, so this is a very, very reactive compound. Excess hydroxide in the solution can now come in and act as a nucleophile. And for our arrow pushing, we'll get attack at either carbon, pushing the electrons onto the adjacent carbon. And to finish off this mechanism, we just need to show this getting protonated with water. And our arrow pushing will look like this. So now that we have phenol, it's really going to want to react at this para position. So let's do that. Let's sulfonate it at that para position. If you watch my sulfonation video, you'll know that there's these two ways to do this. Phenol being so activated should smoothly react in EAS, being, becoming sulfonated with just H2SO4. Now we've blocked this position. And we've blocked with a group that's going to direct meta. Oh, well, that's convenient. Our OH can now only direct to its ortho positions. And this one is directing meta. And that's the same position. And it's where we want our bromine. So this is a really nice workaround to avoid regioisomeric mixtures. Let's brominate now. Now we can warm this molecule in dilute acid and remove our blocking group. This gives our target molecule with good regioselectivity. Now let's try a little bit more challenging of an example. Here is the molecule we want to make from benzene. Let's evaluate our directing effects. NH2 is a strong activator that directs ortho and para to itself. And the methyl group is a weak activator that directs ortho and para. So you can see the challenge. Neither of these groups are directing where we want. So we have to consider groups that might be able to be converted into these groups that give other directing effects. Let me show you a couple reactions you might be able to use, and then we'll try our synthesis. So here's a couple reactions that might be useful. 
Nitro groups can be reduced to amines. Nitro is a meta director that can be reduced to an amine by treatment with lithium aluminum hydride, hydrogenation, and sometimes some other reductive conditions. We also can convert carbonyl compounds, so aldehydes or ketones, can be converted to the methyl group via the Wolf-Kishner reduction or the Clemenson reduction. This is also a meta director that's being converted to an ortho para director here. So we have some options. Why don't you pause me and see if you might be able to come up with a synthesis on your own. Okay, now we need to figure out which of these routes we should actually apply. Well, nitro is a really deactivating group. So if we imagine we'll have a nitro and introduce a CH3, well, we're talking friedel crafts chemistry. And with nitrobenzene, neither friedel crafts alkylation nor acylation is very good. They do not work on this compound. So maybe the nitration isn't going to be our best way to go. Now the carbonyl compound, this is deactivating, but not as strongly as this um, positively charged nitrogen containing nitro group here. So this might be our best way to go. You'll recall that ketones are formed smoothly by friedel crafts acylation using the corresponding acid chloride. However, to introduce this aldehyde on the ring is not quite as straightforward. We can't just use the acid chloride of the aldehyde because that compound is too unstable. And so we need to use a reaction called the gatterman coach reaction. Treating benzene with carbon monoxide gas in the presence of HCl will give our aldehyde. This actually does form the acid chloride we want, but in the reaction flask where it can be quickly trapped. So we can't buy this reagent, but we can generate it in situ. Let me show you that reagent. So we'll generate this from these reagents, and they'll react with benzene, forming our aldehyde. Now we have a meta director installed. And the only way we really know to get nitrogen onto the ring directly is by forming the nitro compound and then reducing it. So now let's nitrate. So we want to remove this completely from the molecule. So we should think Wolf-Kishner reduction or Clemenson reduction. And I found some precedent for using Wolf-Kishner conditions to reduce this and also reducing the nitro group at the same time. So that's convenient. We can treat this with hydrazine in base, heat it, and affect the reduction of both of our groups. So we've come up with a nice chemoselective way to introduce these two electron donating ortho para directing groups in just a few steps. And we introduced a new reaction. Let's do a final example, this time with three groups on the ring. Okay, here's our target molecule. Let's redraw this and evaluate the directing effects of the three groups. The ethyl is weakly activating, the bromide is going to be weakly deactivating, and the nitro strongly deactivating. So it would make sense if we could get this activating group on first to start introducing our substituents. Let's look at directing effects. The ethyl group directs ortho para. The bromide also directs ortho para to itself. And finally, the nitro group directs meta. So the way I've placed these stars on our molecule tells us quite a lot now. If we look, the bromide is doubly directed by this alkyl group and the nitro group. Everything else either has one star and this has two stars and it's a position we don't even want substituted at all. So we know it makes sense to get our activating group on first. And then we know the nitro will direct the bromine to the correct spot but the bromine won't direct the nitro to the correct spot. So basically our order of events has been decided for us. We need to get our alkyl on, nitrate the compound, and then brominate. So the bromine is directed well by these two other substituents being there, so let's disconnect that first. That gets us to this alkylated nitro. And we remember we wanted to introduce this alkyl group first so that the nitro would go ortho para and the ring would be activated. So we'll cleave this nitro off the molecule next. That gives us this molecule with the ethyl group. We might be tempted to put that on by Friedel-Crafts alkylation, but if we do, 
this compound will become even more reactive due to the electron donating alkyl group being on there and over alkylation is a problem. So as our solution, we can do Friedel Crafts acylation and then reduce the acyl group that we form. Introducing an acyl group deactivates the ring to further attack and prevents these issues that we have with Friedel Crafts alkylation. So we actually want to take this one step back to a carbonyl compound. Okay, let's take a look at our forward synthesis. Beginning with benzene, we can treat this with an acid chloride in the presence of aluminum trichloride. Now we need to reduce this to get to the ethyl compound so we get the correct directing effect. We used the Wolf-Kishner last time. Let's use the Clemenson reduction this time. Now we can nitrate our compound as we did in the previous example. And finally, we can brominate this. In this lesson, we learn to evaluate the directing effects of different groups on an aromatic compound. We explored a little bit the deactivating and activating effects of different groups and learned that it's best to introduce your activating groups first if possible. We learned a new reaction for acylating an aromatic ring to give this aldehyde, and we learned how to use a blocking group when we won't favor addition to the correct position. And sulfonation is a great reversible reaction that allows us to block positions on aromatic rings. KP here. If you learned something, give me a thumbs up on the way out. And for more chemistry, subscribe to my channel.